just a quick little overnighter on our way to bigger and better things. and the lad having a bit of a kick in the background there just to vent a bit of energy. Still a bit of daylight left so we'll put the billy on there, have a cuppa and think about something for dinner. So we're at a little place called Suggan Buggan. This is a um, national parks campsite here. A spot for two or three vehicles I suppose. The dunny over there, a few tables and chairs. River just down the back there. It's got everything we need at this hour of the day. A bit after five, sun's all but gone down out the back here. First night on the track of bigger and better things, so we might just poke along here tomorrow, follow the snowy river along on our way to the uh, the nation's capital, the big house on the hill. And it took us 10 15 minutes to set up, get the fire going, Billy's on. It's still daylight. Bad spot.
morning. A few drops of rain overnight. Not much in it though. It always sounds worse when you're in the tent than what it really is. Just enough to make the ground damp. Not a problem at all though. And a couple of billies on the fire. Fill the thermos up. Have a cuppa or two and pack up, hit the road. <laughs> That's the plan. Just got to get the team out of bed first. That'll be the most challenging part of the day. Apparently the lad was going to get up as soon as I got up. But I've been up for a couple of hours. I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> Top spot. Just a little tip. Take the uh, leftover thermos water from yesterday and put it into a nice little dish here. And uh, it's good to have a nice little warm wash of a morning. The alternative is break the ice on the creek and dive in for a tub up. I'll go with the thermos water. How's this place? Would have been a bit breezy in the day if you're bloody a school kid. Look at the gaps in the wall. This is the schoolhouse. Zuggin boogin. Zuggin buggin. Schoolhouse. Fireplace behind me there. It's the biggest part of the building. Probably reflects the conditions of the, of the day. Trying to keep warm. How'd you be going to school in a school class, uh, classroom like this? be fun and it'd be cold but it'd be fun I reckon yeah novel for a while maybe <laughs> yeah. in about 1860 the O'Rourke's were the first permanent residents of Sug and Buggin here built the schoolhouse in the background there it was probably a tribe of kids and they needed somewhere to be educated and life on the land I suppose so um, the schoolhouse was built which would have been a bit of a cold, airy, hot it would have been tough but still what a great example of uh, our history there preserved and um, the Jelanope Historic Society got a bit of effort to look after it and um, we got to do our bit as well there's a, a donation box there throw a couple of bucks in, give them a hand now this is um, Willis on the uh, Victoria New South Wales border we're on the snowy river here um, great section of river some good camping around here unfortunately there's evidence of been some tosses around lately and dragging logs through the bush pulling bollards out leaving their rubbish piled up in the campfires unfortunately it seems to be a all too common occurrence these days. Anyway, 
anyway. Willis. Not a bad spot. There's obviously lots of stories associated with the Snowy River. One in particular is quite interesting, and that's about the flow of water. About 1967, the Jindabyne Dam, the weir at Jindabyne, was completed and effectively halted all but 1% of the natural flow of the river below the dam wall. So from Jindabyne Dam to Marlow, where the river flows to the sea, only carried 1% of its natural flow. The rest was held back for the hydro scheme. In about 2002, after a lot of campaigning by river users, environmentalists, the, um, the government agreed to return environmental flows back to the river. And since about 2009, I think, about 21% of the natural flow of the river is actually in the river. Obviously still nothing like the full capacity that would have without those dams in place. But what was happening was it was with only 1% flow, it affected the native fish habitats, the water warmed up, so that supported other non-naturally occurring species, particularly in the flora, willows and reeds and things. A lot of silt got built up in the corners. By returning that flow to 21% means that the temperature of the water is lower. It's obviously higher water levels. Naturally flushes support some of those native species. And it's interesting some of the things that we do to the place. This is the Wallace Craigie Lookout on the Barry Way. So we've left the, uh, the river down there, the Snowy River, and we've climbed up, uh, heading north up to this uh, Wally Craigie Lookout. And evidently, uh, Wally Craigie was uh, synonymous with publishing the local rag in the Monero area and um, was instrumental in uh, getting this road opened up so this is an important link between the Monero and Gippsland and all this country was burnt in 2003 so it's yeah, 20 years ago and, um, it's come back quite well so what was Craigie look at it's probably the end of our little trip along the barrier way with the Jindabyne just up here we'll pull in there and try and find a pie or something for Smoko for lunch and this is just a bit of a through trip for us just to uh, get to the next leg of our trip hope you enjoyed it if you did give us a thumbs up hit the subscribe button all that sort of stuff appreciate it thanks for watching